Mayor Pro Tem, here on behalf of uh, PPP. Um, interestingly enough, as you might imagine, it, uh, they're in the porta potty business. It uh, stands for uh, Pancho's porta potties, and uh, the porta potty business isn't taken into consideration in this one size fits all uh, ordinance. Uh, when you look at this ordinance, effectively what it does is it monopolizes the liquid waste business to one uh, company, the only company that as of right now is in compliance and as of January uh, 1 will be in compliance and that's uh, South, uh, STWS, Mr. Venegas, who is Mr. Garza's appointee to the Citizens Environmental Advisory Committee. And so when you get down to it, if you want to talk about the hours of deliberation that were put into this ordinance, um, the city sent its very capable staff to participate in the helping of the drafting of this ordinance. This individual was a superintendent from the Public Utilities Department. And in those deliberations, he raised his hand. He said, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Venegas, I believe, sir, that you have a conflict of interest, being how you are in the industry that is uh, set to be regulated being how you are the one who stands to benefit the most by having the monopolization of the industry being uh, done through the process of this ordinance, which takes effect January 1. And uh, he was told uh, not so politely to sit down and shut up, which he did. And within a matter of weeks, he was demoted from a superintendent to a lab analysis, his pay was cut by 40 percent, not, not so much as a reprimand oral or written in his personnel file. And we've since gone and we've successfully fought that within the City Grievance Committee. Uh, there's a ratification is on Mr. Villarreal's desk for him to be reinstated uh, back with his original pay. That's a matter for another day. But my point being is that this ordinance <coughs> was conceived in sin. And this ordinance does not adequately provide for your grease trap folks. It doesn't adequately provide for your porta potty folks. My client, uh, like A6, whom you heard from, is also in the oil field industry. He caters specifically to driving out into this booming hinterlands to go and lawfully process porta potty waste. He doesn't need a vehicle with a gross axle weight of umpteen thousand pounds. He doesn't need a uh, 1,350 gallon tank. He needs a 300 gallon tank which he has. And if you, if, you, if you roll back the hands of time, come January 2010, he first applies for his permit. He's given a permit. At the time, he has his little porta potty operation mounted on the back of a trailer. And this trailer, he drags it all over hell and creation and goes out there and pumps these tanks, brings them in unlawfully, uh, you know, dumps them off here in the city. Well, then he's told, uh, and by the way, TCEQ has approved his trailer, okay? He's told, your trailer's not good enough, Mr. Chamberlain. You need to buy a truck, and you need to have this tank installed in this truck. My client, being the obedient individual that he is, he goes and he spends $49,000 on the truck and the rig and the install and the tank, and, and, and he goes and follows the rules. He gets, what, he gets done what they're telling him to do. But then the goalpost gets moved again. And I said, sorry, Mr. Chamberlain, I'm really, uh, didn't mean to make you spend almost $50,000. We got this new ordinance coming into place. And um, we know that your small little business um, can't afford to spend this god-awful amount of money to uh, buy all these, all these new tools. Sorry, that's just the way it is. Come January 1, 2012, just go ahead and shut it down. Go ahead, tell your family we're going to have to, you know, not make the house payment. Tell your employees they're going to need to find other jobs. And, and, and to answer your question, Mr. Notvice, it's not just about these three individuals that you see here. It's about their families, it's about their employees, and I'm sure there's others out there that maybe didn't know about today's meeting or maybe they don't have the intestinal fortitude to be here in front of this city council chamber and tell you, hey, we got a right to do business here in Laredo too. And so for all of them, we're speaking up on their behalf. This ordinance, I would uh, suggest that you go with uh, Mr. Guerrero's recommendation of putting a moratorium on this ordinance so that it does not take effect January 1, 2012, put the brakes on this, expand the dialogue, bring other individuals into the fold. Let's make this a level playing field. Let's make this, let's make the city of Laredo a good place to do business. Thanks. Well, 